اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی آمین یا رب العالمین السلام علیکم ایوریون ای ہوپ آل اف یو آر ڈوئنگ گریٹ این آر ویڈی ٹو سٹارٹ آف ویڈ دی نیکسٹ لیسن این آر بیسک ایرابک گرامر سو ویڈاوٹ اینی فردر ڈیلی لیٹس ڈائیو رائٹ انٹو ایڈ بیفور وی بگن وی آر فرس گوئنگ ٹو and to make this task easy for us. Therefore, Rabbi Yasir, Walato Asir, Watammim Bil Khair, Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. All right, so what's the sixth lesson about? Uh, we are already familiar with the term Ism Marfa. Uh, we have used it a couple of times in the fourth and fifth chapters, uh, where we learned about the English, uh, we learned about the Arabic equivalent of the English article, the and uh, how it is one of the ways uh, through which we can convert a uh, nakraism into marfaism so today inshallah we are going to elaborate on what are the other six ways of making an ism marfa all right so that's what this lesson is about so bismillahir rahmanir rahim as i mentioned there are seven situations but before we get into this written stuff Let's just have an overview of what this is all about. So I made this little um, chart over here, okay, in order to facilitate our learning. And uh, I know that if we get into the images, I mean, illustrations are and tabular forms are better uh, remembered. Okay, so that's the reason I made this chart. Okay, so how uh, to make an ism marfa? or simply when are the what are the situations uh, when an ism is considered as marfa okay first of all we know about this situation already okay so if a nakra ism is prefixed with al it becomes marfa okay so kitabun becomes okay kitabun becomes al kitabu okay that's what and then we learned about eight different rules uh, that we need to take care of when we are dealing with al okay so that's something totally different do not mix that thing with this lesson this is totally different okay then next point that we already know about is the fact that whenever an ism is a name of some person place or uh, some other special thing for example not exactly thing but name and place okay so whenever an ism is a proper noun that means that it is ism alam alam means a flag or a banner that's why i wrote uh, this i made this banner or this flag over here so whenever an ism is a proper noun or an ism alam that automatically makes it an ism marfa okay so we know about this thing as well now there are five under other situations that can make or that mean that an ism is marfa first of all if an ism is a pronoun okay for example he she it they all these things okay so these are pronouns and a pronoun is a marfa okay it is an ism marfa okay we are going to cover each of these in detail uh, uh, once we are done with this review overview and then there are some pointing nouns okay what are pointing nouns they are your this that this book that car um, okay so these kind of like or these kind of uh, words the pointing nouns okay so all these pointing nouns are also marfa in Arabic all right next we have this group it's called Munada. Munada is an Arabic terminology for someone who is being called or addressed. Okay, Munada is the one who's being called. Okay, so if I say, hey, Zed, so Zed is the one being called. So Zed here is Ism Marfa. Well, it is also Ism Alam. But since he's been called, he also becomes a Munada. And Munada, by definition, is always Marfa. Therefore, uh, well, if we get into another example, for example, we can say that, hey, boy. So boy itself is Nakra. Okay, the word boy. Uh, it's Nakra. It's common. So, but however, since I 
I'm calling out to him, I'm calling him, hey boy, right? So that Nakarasim becomes Marpa because he is being called. So the one being called is called Munada in Arabic and he is or it is Marpa. Okay, what's the other one? Next we have connectors. What are these? These are connecting nouns. You know how we connect two details or how we connect a detail uh, of an ism through words such as who, where, when, that. Alright, the elaboration is coming up. Okay, so don't worry about this. So these connecting nouns are also marfa. Okay, next we have the final situation and that is if that ism is a muzaf of marfa. This point needs elaboration and we are going to cover it uh, not here but in the main lesson. Alright, so there are seven situations and uh, this is a good chart to, you know, memorize. So this has enumerated all the seven types of uh, situations that can make an ism marfa. Alright, so let's begin. What are the seven situations? First of all, we have the ones that uh, get prefixed with al, alright, and then al has eight rules of its own which can be viewed in lesson 4D. If you haven't yet watched uh, this lesson then and you want more details on al, alright, then I would encourage you to go and watch lesson 4D so that you can understand not only this point but this point as well, which is ism alam. I have elaborated these two points um extensively in lesson 40 okay so i'd encourage you to go and watch that lesson first all right so we are done with these two points next we have the pronouns all pronouns are uh is marfa okay so we have he she it they them and their equivalents arabic equivalents are uh, hua for he whom for all of them andum for all of you okay now please do not do not memorize these right now okay we are going to have a separate lesson for the pronouns and that's when I'm going to ask you to memorize them. Right now at this stage in this lesson do not attempt to overburden your mind by trying and memorize them okay because there's a particular way of memorizing them and that would be easier if you attempted that way instead of over here rote learning it okay do not attempt it. Alright so uh, just a brief overview on what pronouns exactly are. They are the words that we use instead of a person, place or thing's name. So instead of saying uh, this is my house, my house is made up of bricks, uh, my house is really big, my house has a big balcony, my house has uh, this and that. Alright, so this repetition of my house, my house, my house is quite irritating and therefore to avoid this repetition, we uh, substitute this my house with it, okay? So here we have it, okay? So these pronouns are actually the uh, words that we substitute, that we use instead of a person, place, or thing's name, all right? So all these pronouns are um, Marfa. Next, we have the pointing nouns. What is a pointing noun? Did, uh, this, that, these, those, these are the English equivalents and in Arabic we have Zalika for that, Haza for this, Ulaika for all of those. Now, uh, once again do not memorize these, okay, we have another chapter for pointing nouns and it, that presents a better and a systematic way of learning and memorizing these okay so do not uh, try and memorize these words here all right so what are pointing nouns these are the ones that point towards some ism so this boy that house these books those uh, pencils okay so all these are pointing nouns and by definition they are ism marfa next the one who's being called so it's called Amunada, okay, and for example, we have Hey Boy, I gave this example earlier on, so 
now uh, all right now one thing to know about this is here this ya this is one of the harufe or one of the harufe nida okay harufe nida so uh, nida means call okay and haruf is you know haruf so the words that are meaningless on their own but uh, whenever they are joined or uh, attached or written beside a fail or uh, or an ism they uh, start giving out meanings okay so uh, that's what a haruf har that's what a harf is and haruf and nida are the ones that uh, that call out to someone okay so he in english is a uh, harf and nida therefore in arabic we have ya ayyu hal or uh, ya all right or allahumma here has a uh, well it is a suffix okay so we're going to cover these three uh, these three haruf and nida in detail in some other chapter inshallah so that's the reason i'm not getting into into the details so over here i have mentioned simply the most common one which is ya so ya is a haruf harf and nida and whenever it is attached with an ism it makes it tanween go away that's why i have written ya waladu and not ya waladun okay so that's one of the things now since this waladu itself is nakra as it has been attached with this um with this harf and nida it becomes marfa okay so any any ism that's being called is uh, converted into ism marfa. All right, so this is the one who's being called. Munada is the one who's being called, and all munadas are ism marfa. Okay, so next we have connective uh, connecting nouns and the muzaf of ism marfa. So first, let's cover the sixth point. What is it? Okay, so let's go with the help of examples. For example the boy who lived the legacy that lives on the place where it's all written so what's going on here these uh, portions okay so the underlying things they are actually the details of the main ism which here is boy in this sentence it's legacy in the last sentence it's place okay so uh, these underlying things are actually kind of defining or adding some kind of detail uh, regarding these main asma and with the help of these bold words who that where okay so with the help of these words this connection has been established and these words the wh words or the this that which is a uh, multi-purpose word really it has lots of uses and it can be used in many ways so that's why it's called multi-purpose word so these words uh, the wh words why when not exactly why yeah that is why yeah so these words tend to serve this purpose as well they are usually used for asking questions but they are also used to connect the details with their main ism okay and their um, arabic equivalent is Alazi, the one who, okay, or he who, rather, he who. This means he who, blah, 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 okay. Then Alazina, those who, okay, bin blah, blah, blah. So uh, these are the Arabic equivalents of connecting nouns. Right, so uh, all these asma are also considered as marfa all right next again uh, do not memorize these there is a separate lesson coming up for each of these this is just an overview in fact this is never exactly presented this way it is uh, it is an enumeration of all the seven situations which can render an ism marfa so uh, it's just a list that i have made so and I need it. I like overviews ahead of getting into the actual thing itself. So that's the reason I'm. I have approached. I have uh, approached this uh, course this similar way, and that's what I usually do. 
all right so the final point is Muzav now this thing is uh, going to be a bit uh, you know it's going to demand some explanation because Muzav is a terminology and uh, it's a terminology that requires some explanation okay it's a some, it's a rather advanced level thing for us currently because it's part of the fragments uh, that's how we actually get introduced to Muzaf and Muzafile. But I decided to just, you know, uh, introduce introduce you to this concept right here. Okay, so what is a Muzaf? Muzaf is simply a possessed or owned ism. So, for example, if I say his book, book is the possessed or the owned item. Or the owned ism okay similarly Zed's book again book is the possessed or owned item so since over here here and all these other examples that we are going to study right now uh, in all these examples the word book is in possession of some other ism all right therefore it is called Muzaf Muzaf is simply possessed or owned ism that's the definition of Muzaf right now okay therefore we can proceed now with the examples for example his book so we know we now know that if uh, an ism is an muzaf is a muzaf of ism marfa all right so uh, let's get on with the examples first for example if i say kitabu kitabu wala din now look at this wala din is it fulfilling any of the seven or any of the six uh, situations where an ism is considered to be marfa let's check it out does it have l no it doesn't does it uh, is it an ism alam it isn't does it point towards something no it doesn't is it being called no it's not and is it a pronoun no it's not all right so that's the uh, all right, so one, two, three, and not in some alum. All right, so those, and is it a connecting noun? No, it's not. All right, so all these situations, I'm not doing seven because uh, seventh is this point already. So, anyway, so these six points haven't been fulfilled in this case. Therefore, we can say that it is ism nakra, right? Now, kitabu waladin, the owner is not special, it's nakra. Okay, it is not marfa. Therefore, this kitabu is going to be, uh, which is the muzaf here. Okay, so kitabu waladin, kitabu is the muzaf because it's, it is owned item of this waladin. So, over here, it is also going to be nakra. Okay, one. Secondly, let's do another example. Kitabu. Kitabul mm, Waladi. Okay, so Kitabul Waladi. Book of the boy. Okay, or the boy's book. Alright, so let's see if this Waladi fulfills the Marfa criteria. Does it have an L? Uh, al? Yes, it does. So it's a Marfa. Marfa, in, uh, so it's a Marfa ism. So Kitabul Waladi. Since this Al Walidi, this owner is special or it's Marfa. This kitabu automatically becomes marfa because its owner is marfa. Okay, so this is the shortest and the, uh, the most straightforward way to understand this example, this point. All right, so if the owner is in any way marfa, then the muzaf also becomes marfa. Special owner, special muzaf. Uh, or marfa owner, marfa muzaf. Nakra owner, Nakra Muzaf. That is it. Okay. All right. So we have the seven situations for the ism to be Marfa. And once again, if we just have a look at this chart, we can see that we now understand it fully, inshallah. If, in, if you guys need any elaboration on any point, just let me know. Okay. So we have ism alam. We know it. We have al okay more of billam then we have muzaf of marfa special owner is equal to special muzaf all right and similarly if we have a nakra owner then it becomes nakra muzaf 
next we have the connectors and after that we have pointers and then monada and finally the pronouns all right so monada is the one that is being called and pronouns are your uh, substitute words okay so that's what up so let's just finalize this lesson and well we have finalized it and well start off with now i want you to memorize these seven situations as i had asked you to memorize the eight rules of al so memorize them okay they these should these things should be on your fingertips so that you can move on ahead in the arabic grammar okay because now we are almost there to uh, start off with our practice and that's the reason i would want you to memorize these things so that we can move ahead really quickly and inshallah we'll understand everything so till the next lesson inshallah ta'ala i'll see you then barakallahu li wa lakum fil quran al hakim allah hafiz